Okay, so I'm just going to kind of go through a few of the basic features of the Cricut design space for those who are new to it. Because I remember being very intimidated when I first started and being afraid to try new things and not really sure what the buttons were. So um, I think it would have been really helpful to watch a video that kind of gave me the rundown. So I'm just going to kind of show you what's over here. Um, insert I images, if you click that, it takes you to where you can insert images from the design space where you can either pay for them or if you have a subscription to the Cricut design space then it shows you the ones that are included in your subscription. Your upload image tab shows you where you can um, upload your own images and as you can see I've uploaded quite a few things for different various projects. Um, it makes me laugh a little bit that there's middle fingers right there because I had an order for something that needed that so that's kind of funny for you all to see. Insert shapes just allows you to insert um, these shapes of your choice. A score line, if you insert a score line, that is for um, if you're making like a card or um, those folding boxes or anything that would require you to um, fold something, this allows you to make a neat folded line. And it actually doesn't get bigger or smaller as far as the width, but you can make it as long or as short as possible. Since this is open, I'll go ahead and show you this little button right here allows you to rotate. So you can rotate it in any direction. In that same sense, you can go to the Edit tab and you can rotate it the degrees that you choose. So you could rotate it 90 degrees and it would do a perfect rotation for you that way. If you, I'm going to close that out, if you insert one of these shapes, we'll insert a heart. Um, and when you insert the heart, if you drag this arrow up and down, it will size it vertically and horizontally in the same, in the same um, width and height. But if you click this little lock box in the corner, it will actually allow you to shape the heart width wise and not long wise or long ways and not width ways whichever you prefer so if you want a really long skinny heart for a project or if you want a really tiny heart or you want it I don't know why you would want it to look like that but it's possible if you do so the, um, that's what that little lock button is your add text feature is over here as well um, and this will allow you to type and it will it should automatically take you to the edit tab which will allow you to change fonts if you click the all fonts button it has the system fonts which would be fonts that you would get off your computer so basically ones that come from like Microsoft Office but also ones that you will download on your computer will come from there Cricut fonts are one you pay for the single layer fonts mean that it it's just a single layer it's kind of self-explanatory um, one of the ones that a lot of people don't know about is a has writing style if you've tried to write on your Cricut you might notice that it doesn't um, fill in blank spaces in the center and so um, this will give you the writing styles of like the Cricut alphabet which changed when you pick that one but it also give you other designs that have a specific writing style so when you write they aren't um, coming out differently than you're expecting so that's kind of a cool feature to keep in mind your set canvas button over here I honestly don't use this very much I'm not really sure why but um, you have the option to choose from canvases so say that you're wanting to make a t-shirt for um, yourself or for a family member it will actually put on the canvas the t-shirt um, outline so that you can see what it would look like on your t-shirt so then for example if I wanted to put this design that I have pulled up I can move it around and see how it would fit on a t-shirt and then it shows you the back of the t-shirt as well so that's kind of a cool feature to have um, oh I didn't mean to click that again and then we have over here we have our layers tabs and the layers tab just shows you what you're working on at this current moment so right now I have that in a writing style if I wanted to I could click this little writing button and it will let me choose the colors that I want to use and although it doesn't print in that color on your machine 
This will tell the machine that it needs to stop what it's doing so that you can change pin colors. Because if you don't change pin colors, then it, the machine will never stop and allow you to put in um, a pink pin whenever you're doing pink and blue together. It would just write everything in the blue color. So you would have to change the color on here to inform the machine that you're doing a different color. You can also uh, click score, which would mean that it would just indent with the score stylus where these letters would be. And then if I go to my fonts that don't have writing styles, then it will actually let me show you the other options. Um, I can, well, let me change it back to, oh, I see what it is. It has writing style right here. I don't want it to have a writing style. So if I change it back to If I change it back to the um, regular font instead of has writing style, as you can see right here, it gives me the option to change it. So if the font comes in a writing style, you can change it that way right there. Um, but you can also make it bold, italic, regular. So I just put it to regular. If I go to my layers tab, um, it's actually going to cut this. This is telling you that it's cutting the uh, design that you have put. You can change it to writing. You can change it to print. If you do a print then cut, you could do it that way. So the options are kind of up to you as, at your discretion. There is also the weld feature, which would attach two things together permanently. So unlike this attach button that has a paper clip, an attach button will let you temporarily attach things so that if you decide later that you want to detach them, then they're not permanently adhered together. So I'm going to take these two hearts and I am going to attach them. So I'm just going to select both of those and I will attach them. That means when I go to print to the go button and I'm trying to make my design, it will actually cut those things as one unit as opposed to them being detached. It would put them as two different units. So now I can resize them together. If I change anything about them, they will get changed together. Now, if I decide that I want them to be separate units, all I have to do is click the detach button and it will get rid of them being attached together so then they are a single unit once again. Now, if I wanted to weld these together for some reason, so like I'm going to go to my edit tab and I'm actually going to use this mirror feature and I'm going to flip it so that it's upside down and I'm not really doing anything specific, but just so that I can use the weld feature. So if I select both of those and I click the weld button, it's actually going to attach them together permanently. And you see it got rid of the little heart shape. So now I could use this as a butterfly if I wanted to. Or I could use it as an hourglass or I could use it for whatever purpose I wanted to. But now it is permanently attached. It's no longer available to have two units um, like it was with the attach feature, unless of course I hit the undo button, which is up here, um, that will allow me to undo it so that I can have my units back as individuals. Um, the slice button is also up here, and the way the slice button works is it will actually slice, whenever lines overlap, it will slice that line overlap into as many pieces as you have. So obviously I didn't make anything there, I'm just showing that I sliced it. So that that's kind of a cool feature to have and, and you can check out another video to see some purposes of using the slice feature. We also have the flatten feature which actually flattens objects that maybe you want to print and cut. So if you have a project that has a lot of different layers that will make it only into one layer, so that's really useful for projects where you're printing and cutting. The contour button, um, I just posted a video about the uses of that, but it hides lines that you don't want to be seen. So say you have a font that um, does cutouts in the center of the font, you may not want those exposed, so you can hide those lines um, by hitting the contour button, and you would actually click the lines you want to hide, and then you would hit the contour button again, and it would hide them for you. Um, on the edit tab, we have, oh, I thought of something on layers. Down here on layers, we have duplicate, which would just mean that um, it's going to make a copy of whatever I have selected. There's the delete button, 
where I can delete an object. There's also um, a group and ungroup, which um, when you, you have something, usually that you inserted an image from on Design Space, it's going to kind of work where you can group and ungroup things down there that way. The edit button will allow you to resize your object. It'll allow you to rotate it um, the number of degrees you want. It'll allow you to pick the grid position that you have. You can also mirror images on this um, feature so that you don't have to actually rotate it by hand using the circle button. The sync feature allows you to make two things that make objects the same color or um, if you wanted them both to be black, which I already moved it so now, but as you could see it turned the black font into gray, so I've synced them to be the same. So that's really handy if you um, had to separate letters and you want them all to be the same color, so you can just drag them instead of going through individually and changing them yourself. And then the canvas is what, what we have pulled up, so it would give you the sizes that you would need so that you could use your project um, effectively without pick, you know sizing it the wrong way. So I mainly stick to the layers and edit tab, but there are I mean there's a million features to learn, but that's just kind of a quick overview of these features over here. On top we have the align button and we have the arrange button. So obviously there's select all, so I can select all of my things. I can arrange them by moving them front to back. So if you're layering, you can move objects to the back to the front. This allows you to perfectly align things. So if I want to center um, my heart in the center of this I Love Cricket design that I'm creating, it will do that automatically for me. Um, obviously, you can do it in any alignment that you want. The arrangement, so if I were to move um, my heart right here and make it larger because I want to layer this. I can select all because I, that just needs a way to do that. And then it would actually, well, it's not going to let me do it in that sense. I don't know why. Oh, okay, because I just need to select one. I would move to back. So then it would allow me to um, put the heart behind the text and um, that would be a cool way to just see what your design would look like. Because obviously it's not going to print out this way, but it would at least be a visual representation for what you're working on. Cut and copy, just like um, Microsoft Word, which I'm sure most of you have used. There's paste, undo and redo, your save buttons, and then your files, which allow you to open new projects or save your projects. So a lot of cool features. And then last but not least is your go button. And your go button will um, bring up your design and actually let you choose your mat size and then allow you to choose how many copies you want to make. And then this is a, a really important if you're doing an iron-on image with heat transfer vinyl because you'll need to mirror the image to be ironed on. So um, once you click the go button, it'll have you select the dial that you're doing and on your machine you actually will spin the dial, but right now it says I have my vinyl selected. And once this is ready to go, my uh, it tells me to load my mat. And then after I've loaded my mat, let me let me load a mat so we can see. Once I have loaded my mat, my mat, my little C on my Cricut machine will light up, but also down here it will have my little cut feature, which means that it's ready to go and I can select it. If for some reason you make a mistake in this area, you can go back to the preview and just click yes, you want to cancel the cut. And it will unload your mat, but it will take you back to the preview and you can make adjustments. And then obviously, if you still don't like the way it looks, you just click the little X in the top corner and it takes you back to the design space. All right, well, I hope this was helpful to you all, and um, I will be posting more videos later on, so I hope you subscribe, and I hope um, if you have any questions, feel free to comment and let me know, and I'm happy to answer them, and if there's any videos that you would like to see, I'm happy to post those as well, so just keep me posted on what you all are interested in, and I'm happy to help. All right, you all have a great night, and happy crafting.